Hey everybody, welcome back. It is the Razball Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am beat on the handsome mustachioed man across from me in the bikini pig sweater is Greg <laughs> Albright. If you haven't watched us on YouTube yet, I feel like that's a reason enough to watch us. How you doing, Greg? Yeah, yeah, I'm wearing my uh, my bikini pig. <laughs> <sweater>. <laughs> Uh, this uh, this is such a bizarre sweatshirt. Actually, underneath I have I'm wearing Roto Wear uh, uh, Reggie Jackson. I have to oh, nice. uh, yeah rep- representing uh, my uh, Reggie Jackson. He was uh, from age I want to say age five to like age twelve. I thought he was my father. <laughs> Um, anyway, there's, there's no time. This is not a podcast where we should be joking around because uh, O'Neill Cruz is out for three months and uh, I want to kill myself. <laughs> Why, man? Why the one guy, honestly, on the player shares, like you look at the player shares and it's like, oh, wow, I have O'Neill Cruz on every single team. <laughs> Jeez, that stinks. That's a really not good thing. Oh, man. Dude. I mean, he was so, like, he was perfect in every way. Like, he was the best thing that's ever happened to this world. (laughs) Besides Rich Jackson from age 5 to 12. He was like, O'Neal Cruz. Oh, man. I have I've covered my mirrors. I'm sitting Shiva for O'Neill Cruz's ankle right now. I am honestly it's devastating. I am completely like I can't I don't know, man. I think I wanna I, I think I'm gonna check out that fantasy uh ping pong. <laughs> I'm gonna try I'm, I'm gonna try a different fantasy sport. I mean, God. Oh, just brutal what was he doing man why was he like di- he like dove into uh the catcher's shin like he was jumping into a ball pit at sesame place like what is that like what are you doing man you know the bases are bigger what are you doing <laughs> why 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 yeah. why uh it's brutal gray i know he was i mean as you mentioned there is there is nobody beating the uh the o'neill cruz drum louder than you you got him in i mean the only leagues i really didn't have him were ones i'm in with you because you have him um <laughs> like, that was that what was, did I was do? what did i do man <laughs> Why? What did I do to the universe? Like, what was it that we're like, why did the fantasy baseball overlord smite me <laughs> on, on Easter, too? It feels like it's a little bit on the nose. <laughs> like, what's going on here? Like, why me? Why? <laughs> what did I do, bro? <laughs> Tell me. I want to make amends. I want, I'm going into, we should do, uh, we should broadcast a, we should do a podcast live from uh, Confession. <laughs> hey, <laughs> tell me what I have to do, please, priest, father, father, please tell me, <laughs> father Reggie Jackson, please tell me. <sighs> it's brutal. I, it's like, the, it's the most brutal injury. I mean, three months, man. I don't even know. I, yeah, it's devastating i'm so fucking bad i'm so pissed man <sighs> so, so is there anybody in pittsburgh that you were interested in <laughs> this replacement what? gray i mean that's what i have to start with and then we'll, we'll go to the waiver wire but like it's, it's <laughs> pittsburgh like he was he was it like it was him Ronald reynolds who's just like hitting anything he's like get me out of here i will do whatever it takes Please get me out of Pittsburgh, and like that's it. Like that's the whole lineup right now. And now, now it's now it's just Brian Reynolds. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like uh, I like uh, G Juan Bay. Um, sure, I'm saying that right. <laughs> I like. I, I do you did like, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I might have. Um, that's because I live on the edge of Koreatown in LA. So, you 
know, osmosis. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of like uh, Jiwan Bay because of uh, speed. So, but that's like, I mean, we're talking about a at least a fifteen team mixed league or deeper. Um, you know, for for him, it's like. NL only. I really actually wanted Bay in NL only leagues. I think uh, his value goes up a little bit uh, because even if he was, even if he wasn't an everyday starter, which I think he was already. Like I think he was, he was already more or less starting. But now, obviously, he's going to be an everyday starter for sure. And he might even. I mean, if. I were in Pittsburgh, I'd probably move Bay up to lead off, like in front of Brian Reynolds. So he could actually have a huge uptick in value. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time we're this is all said and done, he might be on radars for 12 team mixed leagues, potentially, because his speed is really good. And he had uh, you know, in the minors in triple A, he had eight homers, eight homers and 30 steals last year in triple A as a 22 year old uh, hitting 289 with um, uh, just under 17% strikeout rate. So that's really good. I mean, he has a potential. I could see him possibly being like a little bit of a breakout. So, you know, if there's a silver lining here, no, there's no silver lining. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't be positive. You can't even I, try and fake yeah. it for us, Gray, and just, just give us a little bit of, I mean, there's another, there's a reason we're the number one fantasy baseball podcast in, in South Korea, Gray. And it's because we give you the information on Ji Hwan Bay. Because I, because I pronounce the Korean name. The only, that's the only name only, you've ever pronounced only, correctly on this only, whole podcast. Only Korean. Yeah, I literally can't even. I, Brian Reynolds. <laughs> Castillo has still not been pronounced correctly on this podcast from from your side. I mean, I can't even pronounce Americans' names correctly. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So going over to the waiver wire real quick, Gray. I mean, is there? I mean, who are you looking at potentially? For some for possible some pickups, possible pickups as, as a as middle infielder type, type or a shortstop, if you're stuck in needing a, a shortstop. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> All right. I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe we're talking about replacing O'Neill Cruz. Like, this is brutal, man. Um, okay, so in <laughs> super deep leagues, I picked up... Uh, <laughs> This is going to sound really sad. I picked up Nick Ahmed. Um, God, man, awful. I picked up uh, Wilmer Flores, who has uh, second base eligibility, because I was able to move C.J. Abrams into my shortstop area. Oh, my God, this is so, this is so sad. This is so <laughs> sad. Yeah. Um, actually, in some some people in the comments were like, this is the best. These are, these are the comments I truly enjoy <laughs> the ones that are like well i guess my season's over i've lost o'neill cruz but you know can you help me pick a replacement here is my options carlos correa <laughs> Vero <laughs> estrada i'm like dude what you're not i mean you're replacing him with a, a top 75 overall player like <laughs> Come on, man. I'm over here looking at Orlando RC or Nick Ahmed, and you're picking between Carlos Correa and Theo Estrada? Oh, I mean, anyway, um, I don't know. Bryson Stott, supposedly, according to ESPN, Bryson Stott's available in, in 85% of leagues. And that seems unlikely. Um, maybe Ed, Edmundo Sousa in super deep leagues. Um, Mauricio Dubon in super deep leagues. Uh I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying uh, Casey Schmidt is called up soon. Uh, he's uh, he's in AAA right now for the Giants, and he's hitting well. And you know, David Viar stinks. Um, Bryce Terang, who is my lead by last week, uh, he's potentially available in uh, a bunch of leagues. So yeah, I mean, it's not great. I think I picked up Kyle Farmer in one league. It's awful. I mean, it's really terrible. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I'm sorry to put you through that, Gray, but that's what the people wanted to hear. And if you have a specific list, if, if you're like, 
I need different names. Just throw them in the comments. You know, we'll we'll get you there. Moving on to a different O'Neill, Tyler O'Neill. Uh, he was called out by uh, Marmol, the the Cardinals manager, and then Tyler called out Marmol for going about it in the wrong way and calling him out in public. Whatever about that, he's pretty much played since he got got benched. He may he's probably going to sit a little bit just because of of everything we said in the preseason about the Cardinals outfield and just the number of people that they have that can play out there. But are you in still on a a bounce back season on Tyler O'Neill, or, or where are you where at? Are you at? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I mean, I hopefully, I, uh, you know, that whole thing, the, honestly, that was a really bizarre move with, like, uh, the Marmol uh, O'Neal thing, because, like, it didn't really appear like he was dogging it. <laughs> it was a little, right? <laughs> I mean, it looked like he was running hard. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's just, like, I know he used to be fast. It looks like he slowed up for sure, but... I don't know. He didn't look like he was dogging it, though. He looked like he was really, like, coming around third. It looked like he was really trying to uh, hustle into home. I mean, if anyone should have been benched, it was the third base coach. He should have never been sent. Like, he was out by, like, 10 feet, right? Yeah, he was He was, yeah, definitely, he was, out. He was definitely out. I will say, I think the reason that he, you, you can kind of see where the possible criticism is, criticism comes from is there's a point where he kind of like he's like oh i need to i need to go like and then you can see him get just a little bit faster and so maybe it's like oh well you should have been at that speed you know from from the jump and why do i have to tell you that that but but at the same time time, you're right he was running for the most part it was it was probably a poor decision by everybody like the third base it starts with third base coach uh, O'Neal probably should have sprinted. Marmol probably shouldn't have called him out. O'Neal shouldn't have then called Marmol out again, like in retaliation. Like none of that probably should have happened. But I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm. I mean, I just the one angle I saw. I, I mean, I think the third base coach was completely in the wrong for sending him. But you know, whatever. I, either way. I think the real question is whether or not O'Neill is going like the the big issue is when a uh, a player has like a situation like this where they're like, you know, in the doghouse, they they can go either it can go one of two ways. Like you can either be like that can motivate him to be better and like start hitting like he should be able to hit or he can, you know, curl into a ball and be like uh, until he's like traded to a different team. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's not the latter. Um, uh, I'm, you know, hoping. I, I don't know which way it's going to go. I, th- I still think he's super talented. Like I was joking around on, um, on the site saying that, like, you know, he's going to, uh, he's going to get traded for a middle reliever, uh, and then, you know, he's going to become an all-star outfielder for like the Rays or something. <laughs> um, hopefully that isn't what happens. But I mean, I think that possibility you know i think there's an element of truth there like that could happen like he could just become like you know persona non grata in uh in st louis and become like you know the guy who's like third to fourth outfielder who is like gets platooned and is miserable because he's not getting along with the manager and that just snowballs out of control hopefully it doesn't happen, but that could happen. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that's, you know, a, a zero chance. Um, you know, I think it's too early to say exactly what's going to happen, though. I mean, I, I have no idea. Uh, hopefully. I still think he's super talented. I think he's capable of, like, a 30-plus homer, 7-plus steal, 260-plus average type year, which is you know, a number one outfielder. I think he's capable of that. Whether or not we see it, uh, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of down on him as as a whole. Just I don't I don't know that he's getting back to the same the same power numbers. The only thing really at this point that that kind of sticks, I guess, is is strikeouts a little bit, and then potentially, 
you know, you, you could look at, you can kind of look at where the launch angle is just to see where that is. But again, that's also very, it's very early. Launch angle is down quite a bit. Like he's at six degrees from 17.8 last year and 13.6 or, or 13.6 last year and 17.8 in 2021. So that's not exactly ideal, but it's very early for that. Strikeout rate is 28%, which is pretty much in line with kind of the area he's been in for his career. So nothing really changed there. I mean, if you think Tyler O'Neill was going to bounce back, I don't really see a reason to change other than potentially, like you mentioned, the, the plate appearances could, I mean, it could become a problem where he is in a sh- straight split and he has sat against a couple of lefties already this season. Not the end of the world. We talked, or sorry, he sat, sat against a couple of righties, my bad, um, a couple of times this, this season. Not the end of the world, but just definitely something to monitor as they do have plenty of people in their outfield. And you're right. I mean, they could potentially move him. They have plenty of outfielders to take over. I don't know that they necessarily bring the, you know, the offerings that Tyler O'Neill does, but they have plenty of outfielders there. They they may or may not need a starting pitcher uh, and and so that may be something that they look at, but I don't think for now there's there's really anything to do if you, you know, from where we were two weeks ago. Moving on to Michael Harris. He has a back strain. Should, should be back when he's first, when he's available, first available on 417. 417. It seems like this was more precautionary. They said they could have sat him down for a few days and seen where he was at. I mean, are you interested if it becomes something in Sam Hilliard or any of the other replacements in the outfield for the Braves? <laughs> Sam Hillier. Hey, <laughs> anybody can steal 25 bases this year, Gray. <laughs> <laughs> well, they may actually Daniel. let him start out of the, you know. <laughs> oh, man. No, Sam Hillier is very, that's a very <laughs> funny person. <laughs> that's a, uh, that seems pretty much their center fielder, though. I mean, there's not a lot of people with the range. For yeah, them. I'm looking at their, uh, I'm actually. Their outfield right now, the Braves, that is, their outfield um, right now looks like if you were to do a multiple choice as to, like, which one of these three is retired, at at least most people would be like, one of them is retired. (laughs) (laughs) Marcel Zuna, Eddie Rosario, Sam Hilliard, Kevin uh, Pillar, and Eli White. What? (laughs) What? What? Wait, at least I think some people might fall for that and be like, at least two of those guys are retired. <laughs> not, just, not just one. Be like, Kevin Kevin Pilar's not really playing anymore, right? Pilar? <laughs> Dude, what, what year is this? <laughs> where's the uh, Where's the Robin Williams meme? <laughs> what year is this? Kevin Pilar? <laughs> what? Where did he come from? I honestly thought he was retired. I'm I'm not even joking. Uh, and Eddie Rosario, Marcelo Zuna, and um, uh, Hill- Sam Hilliard. I mean, some of those guys should be retired. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, Hilliard, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess in, in an NL only, sure. But everyone's, you know, rostered in an NL only. I don't think he's really anything for like mixed leagues at this point. Um, well, it, I, it's kind of a wait and see thing with Sam Hilliard for, um, you know, for mixed leagues. I would say if he starts hitting, then he's nothing but a hot potato because Harris is going to come back, you know, in two weeks and replace him anyway. So, yeah, I mean, Hilliard's bleh, yeah. <laughs> Harris could be activated a week from today, which is Monday. We're, we're talking on Monday. Uh, so, yeah, he could be activated a week from today, and it could be a week-long thing. So, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot here. Just in case it became anything, wanted to bring those guys up. You know, I guess Acuna could get some center field starts if, if you're one of those center field, left field, right field specific leagues, but that that's getting pretty specific at this point. Um, Jazz Chisholm gave us a very brief scare. He was back in the lineup this weekend. Are you worried in general about – him staying healthy, him staying just healthy, just yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. Especially with this nonsense of them putting him in center field, like, uh, are they try? Are they trying to get him injured? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Of course he's gonna run into the fence at some point. Yeah, this is bad. He actually, his injury 
well, his non-injury now, he seems like he's fine, but his looked as bad as O'Neill Cruz's. I mean, it looked awful. Yeah, I, I, I thought, thought it was over. I thought, yeah, I thought it was over too for uh, for Jazz Chisholm. I, I absolutely did. But yeah, he's fine for now. I guess. Hopefully, he stays healthy. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I but mean, you know, they had to get Luis Arias, uh, you know, his into second base. They they definitely couldn't just leave Jazz at second base and, you know, make Luis learn center field or sign a center fielder. Heaven forbid, you know, got to make the guy who's never played the outfield before transition into center field, the most dangerous outfield position to play. Great. Thank you very much, Miami Marlins. Marlins but, but for now. For now. I mean, I mean, are are you are you worried to the point you'd you'd move him? I mean, are you are you just in O'Neill Cruz shock and you're like worried you're gonna lose both of them at the same same time? Is that really what's going on? Are you like would you really move him for draft day cost right now? Uh yeah, I mean if I got draft day cost, I think I'd probably move him in uh yeah. I mean if I were able to get probably his value sure yeah i could i could see moving him i mean i'm i'm concerned like you know we're only you know 10 days in here and he's already had like two scares um so yeah i mean i'm i in the leagues where i'm in there's no trading like i i can't trade in my league so you know i'm i'm sort of you know do as i say not as i do because i'm not trading him because I can't, but if <laughs> right. you're able to, yeah, I mean, I could see it. Yeah, that's fair. I, I think I'm still holding on Jazz. I mean, I'm just, I was, if I was in on him in my leagues, which I was, I, I mean, I'm. he still brings everything that I thought he could, which is 250 and just a crazy amount of home runs and stolen bases. Do I do I love that they transition to the outfield? Uh, I wish he would. They would let him get eligibility for next year and then move him back to the infield and just make somebody else play center field. But it is what it is. I, I knew that this going in. So uh, I guess for fantasy purposes, for fantasy purposes, he's up on strikeout rate from you know. I mean, he was always a high strikeout rate guy, but he was 27, 28 percent. He's up to 35, but it is still early, so hasn't quite fully normalized there. Uh, let me know if you've ever heard this, Gray. Eloy Jimenez has a soft tissue injury. He has a left what? hand sling. What? What? <laughs> Eloy Jimenez is injured? Hold, what? No. <laughs> no way. You, you're joking. No. <laughs> Come on. Wait a minute. Next, you're going to tell me that water is wet. <laughs> and Taco Bell diarrhea burns. No. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Eloy's hurt. Yeah, I've I've heard. <laughs> I've heard yeah. that story yeah. before. Hey, hey, is this a glitch in the matrix? Because I'm having deja vu. <laughs> so are you interested more? Or I guess the main beneficiaries here have to be like Andrew Benatendi, who now starts pretty much every day. Oscar Colas might start every day now. Um, are you interested in Jake Berger at all? Potentially, oh, getting, potentially some getting some DH? No. <laughs> No, not at no, all. No, 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 <laughs> not really. I mean, and I guess in, if you're in a deep enough league, but he looks like he's still a platoon player with uh, Gavin Sheets. So, yeah, I mean, it, you got to be in a deep enough league and have daily moves. You can't have, like, if Berger's out versus righties, you can't play that in a weekly league. I mean... And in most deeper most deeper leagues are weekly leagues. So yeah, I don't think I don't think Berger is really someone to be worried about right now. Um, I like Colas though. I, I actually I I'm a fan of him. I think he's I think he's playing enough even in weekly leagues. Like he's sitting versus some tough lefties, but you don't really want to have lefties face tough lefties anyway. So I I don't mind Oscar Colas. Yeah, I, I think he's. Somebody that was, I mean, he's going to get playing time in the outfield anyways. I feel like this kind of locks him in because there's no expectation that somebody else comes in and really takes over at all. Although Eloy hadn't played in the outfield at all. That's how bad it is. It's great. He literally hurt himself without being in the field. Like that's, that's where we're at on Eloy Menez. If you drafted him, are you... I mean, I mean, not to, not to put that, you know, not to put that funk out out there 
but I mean, Louis Roberts gonna this is gonna happen to him too. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, you know what? I mean, you know, God bless. I hope it doesn't. I hope I'm wrong, but I mean, if we're here next week saying Louis Roberts now on the IL again, I'd probably have the same reaction as to Eloy Jimenez. I mean, unfortunately, these guys just can't stay on the field. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you had Eloy, Eloy, are you looking to trade him? Maybe you trade him to, uh, you know, the teams sitting at the top that are feeling good right now and think they can wait and, and wait on him to come back. What are you doing with him? Where does where does he drop it in your rankings? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. Dra- I didn't draft Eloy. I I knew this was coming. I uh, I would trade him though. Yeah, sure. If you'd you rather have him or Tyler O'Neill, Eloy Jimenez for anything. Like I would take like. I'd probably take like a Chris Bryant or something, you know, like a uh, bird in the hand, someone who's actually on the, who's s- still not injured, <laughs> you know, I don't know. For now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I would definitely, I would definitely consider a lot of trades for Eloy. If someone was willing to give me anything, like if someone's like, Oh, you know, like, a closer, which I, I don't usually, I wouldn't usually trade for a closer, but if, you know, if I need a closer and I had Eloy, yeah, I would probably trade him. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would look to move him. All right. Fair enough. Moving on to St. Louis. We kind of talked about Tyler O'Neill already. Uh, one of the reasons he's getting to play and they really haven't been able to sit him down as much potentially is that Lars Dupar has a thumb contusion. He's not expected back during the Colorado series. They haven't really said anything beyond that when he's expected to come back. Uh, I mean, are you looking at for this week if you're if people are trying to fill in some of the outfield in spots due to injury? Are you looking at you know a Dylan Carlson or a Juan Yepes in deep leagues? Um, yeah, I mean, or Alec Burleson. Uh, yeah, yeah, Burleson. Yeah, Burleson's is kind of, Burleson is kind of interesting. Um, Carlson is, you know, a little bit interesting. Uh, Yepes was a guy who I actually, I put bids in on him for uh, my NL only, but I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get him. I didn't put that many bids. I didn't bid that high, but yeah, cause he's like, you know, but these are kind of like, um, these are mostly NL only maybe 15 team mixed league uh, for Burleson potential possibly um but he's got like no speed he's got a little bit of power he should hit for a good average like he doesn't strike out at all burleson's uh k rate right now is 12 percent, which is really good for rookie obviously um so yeah he might hit 275 with like 15 to 18 homers uh over the course of like say 120 games which is you know Eh, kind of eh, but you know, if you're in a deep enough league where you're struggling to find at bats, he's you know he's he's kind of interesting, um, especially if he's hitting second. Um, Carlson, I'm like, eh, yeah. I mean, some of these guys are still, even with uh, Newt Bar and uh, even with Newt Bar out and uh, O'Neill in the doghouse. I mean, some of these guys still are not even playing, like Yepes and Carlson are still kind of platoon only versus lefties, which is, you know, that only versus lefties, you're, you can't do anything with that except in maybe a daily league when you just pick him up off of waivers and put him in your lineup for just that day or something. Yeah. I guess, are you worried about uh, Lars at all once he comes back? I mean, thumb is one of those things in, the, I mean, anything in the hand or, or wrist could, could potentially be an issue. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not he's able to do uh, the pepper grinder without any pain. So if he can do that, then <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not a doctor. I kn- honestly, I pretended to be doctor at a time, you know, in my life, uh, try and get, you know, try and get lucky in the bars. <laughs> I've, I've said I've been a doctor, but I'm not actually a doctor. <laughs> so I don't know. Hopefully, his thumb is fine. That's all I'll say. I don't know. All right, moving on. Joey Gallo has a right side injury. We don't really know much right now. It sounds like it's day to day. Just kind of bringing it up. Anything, anything to comment on? And I'll go ahead and throw Starling Marte in here because they're they're both kind of day to day. We don't really know much more right now. 
Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I actually dropped Joey Gallo <laughs> in one league uh, just today. Actually, just before we jumped on here, I dropped him because it was it's a 15 team mixed league, too. So if that gives people any idea of where I'm dropping Gallo, I mean, he was he was hot last week. I don't think I, I don't. You know, I was joking around on the site saying like, wow, the end of the shift has really fixed him. I, I don't think that's the case at all. <laughs> I was I was joking. I don't think that's accurate. Um, I think he's probably, you know, if he gets hot, great. You pick him up. But I'm not in a 15 team mixed league. I'm probably not holding Joey Gallo. Um, who is the other guy? Uh, Sterling Marte. I don't know. I don't know how much. I don't know how badly he's injured yet. Uh, as we're as we tape this, it's still uh, it's still a uh, you know an ongoing issue with his neck that we we're not sure yet how bad it is. So we'll see. All right, I am holding Jolly, Joey Gallo in in my fifteen team mix, but that's it, it is definitely on the on the border, just depending on who is who is available out there in your leagues. Let's move on to something a little bit more exciting, Gray. Let's move on to some of the prospect call-ups. Francisco Alvarez gets gets called up probably a little bit earlier than we would have gotten to see him, but Omar Nevarez is going to the IL for eight or nine weeks. Francisco Alvarez had 28 home runs across three levels last year. Are you grabbing him in every league? Well, I'll say that I don't. Yeah, no, I would grab I would grab uh, Alvarez. I think uh, you know he's probably. I want to say he's probably on the verge of like a top 15 catcher if uh, if he is going to be uh, if he does stay with the Mets like the whole year, like even when um, Navarez comes back. I I don't know like what they're going to do. It depends on if Alvarez hits too. like if Alvarez hits. He's probably their number one catcher for the rest of the year. I mean, it would be shocking to me if he hits well and then they replace him when Omar Navarez comes back. Like, that doesn't make any sense. So hopefully he's, uh, you know, hopefully Alvarez hits and he's up for good. And if that's the case, I could see him being like a top 15 to top 12 overall catcher. Like, think like... uh, Maybe 17, well, say like 16 to 19 homers. This is a course of, this is a, over the course of the full season. Um, 16 to 19 homers, 225 to 235 average, uh, no speed, but he's a catcher, so whatever. Um, so that's okay. I mean, that's not, I don't think. Like he has like Adelaide Rushman type upside, but I think he's worth grabbing in most leagues just to see what happens. Like, I don't know. Some people were asking like Gabriel Moreno or Alvarez. I mean, I think Moreno probably is better long term, but if you're in a, a a shallow enough league where that's even an option. I would try Alvarez just to see what happens, to see if he comes up and he's hot, because Moreno's not really doing anything right at right this second. But, you know, in a shallow enough league, you can just change your catcher like once a week if you want. So it doesn't really matter, you know. Yeah. Um, so I would try Alvarez probably just to see, you know, maybe you get some upside. Um, but, yeah, in general, I don't think like he's going to be – you know, I don't think he's gonna be like a top three catcher, like a top five even. I don't think he's gonna be a top five catcher, but I think he's, you know, he's okay for power, no real average, and no speed. Yeah, I think we're kind of looking at like the Cal Raleigh season. If he, if, if yeah, that's actually like, that's a good comp. Yeah, at. I could see that comp. Yeah, like eventually, I think you know, he gets the hit tool together, and maybe he, he's he's probably drafted much higher but yeah i think for this season like if everything goes like it like well he's cal raleigh um would you take him over sean murphy who has struggled to get out of the game get out of the game uh no not yet i would i would try and see if sean murphy gets going now that travis uh they is out for uh a week with the concussion yeah I, i'm yeah. holding on sean murphy as well i think he has you know, I, I think he's kind of the line at catcher right now for where 
where you go with you know the upside of a potential, of a potential Alvarez, Alvarez versus, versus the playing time. The playing time. Moving on, uh, Mackenzie Gore, Gore, former top prospect. Top prospect. He, he got the got, call up. I mean, he got six Ks. What are you thinking, Gray? I mean, he's looked good, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Yeah, no, he, he, yeah. I mean, he's been fine. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. He still has like his command is still really wonky. So, I mean, it's still a small sample size. So we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe his command comes around in the next start or two. But yeah, if his command is going to be bad, his, you know, his starts are going to get ugly. Like I'm, I'm concerned still. I, I'm not, I'm not like free, you know, I'm not letting him start against everyone. Just like assuming he's, he's fixed himself and he's, and he's good now. Like I want to see, I would want to see more, but better, you know, I guess better to keep, runs off the board even though he's still putting a lot of runners on base yeah, yeah. He's, he's, the walks, walks were a little bit better on on his start at colorado which was his last start uh, only two walks in that one i don't know what to take from that like if you don't walk people in colorado if you're just not scared of the lineup or if you know the lack of break on his pitches actually helped him get the ball over the plate but it's a i'm, I'm picking him up i'm, I'm rostering him but i'm I may not, may or may not start them depending on on matchup situation. Moving on, we have Dre, Dre Jameson. I mean, he is off to a good start here. Are you are you, are you picking, are you him, picking up him up in every league? league? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think uh, Dre Jameson could potentially be like a big breakout. Uh, like you know, with rookie pitchers. You know, we've said this for so long, but, you know, there's going to be, you know, like we have the uh, term roofie, like there's going to be, you know, situations where they're just going to kill you, uh, rookie pitchers. So, you know, there's risk here, but I mean, there's a potential for him to be the top rookie pitcher this year. And that's, you know, and that's I'm including uh, Grayson Rodriguez and, you know, uh, uh, Gavin Stone, if he ever comes up and, you know, I'm, I'm including all, all the guys you think I'm including, like I, I have, uh, you know, Dre Jamison could be that guy. I mean, he could be that top rookie pitcher. I, I don't know yet. Like the good thing is he's thrown, I think I want to say like 150 plus innings last year. So he could stay in the rotation for a while. Like it wouldn't be shocking to see him stay in the rotation through like August or in and into September. Like that he has that potential. You know, I it depends, I guess. I don't know how long Zach Davies is out. So I mean that's the spot he's taking. But again, if he's pitching well, he's staying in the rotation. They're not gonna just pull him out of the rotation just be when he's pitching well. Um, and if he doesn't pitch well, you're not going to want him on your team anyway. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would grab him though. I love the upside. I think, you know, he's definitely got potential. I mean, he throws 96 fast, 96 mile per hour fastball, um, absolutely insane slider and change, uh, or no, not, is his change crazy? No, I think it's a slider and uh curve, but yeah, it's. It's good. I mean, he's really solid. I've picked him up now. I didn't grab him in a twelve te- in twelve team mixed leagues, but that's just because I didn't need him. But in uh, fifteen team mixed league and deeper, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I would, I would for sure grab him. In, I would grab him in any league, to be honest. Uh, I just didn't need him in my twelve team mixed league. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm in all the way. Yeah, there's. You know, not every team needs him, but he should be owned in just about every league. Obviously, if you're in a league that is replacing Oneo Cruz with Carlos Correa, maybe not that league, but in most leagues, we're we're looking at making that. Um, as you mentioned, Dre Jameson, you know, high velocity fastball guy. Uh, the only other thing I'll say on this real quick is Brandon Fat was another guy that was that was working towards that last roster or last spot in the rotation. He's a name to monitor in your deeper leagues if you're looking for a potential, you know, watch list guy or if you it's a type of league you need to grab these guys before they come up. 
you know, if for whatever reason Jameson doesn't transition well to starting, then maybe they bring up fat or maybe they do like a Jameson fat like combo and let each of them go three innings or something like that. And that and would be at least interesting in, in a deep enough league that you're prospecting like like that. Yeah, no, completely. All right, moving on, we have Chris Bubik. Uh, I saw some varying degrees of fab spent on him this this fab run, Gray, but he's off to a very good start. He's thrown 11 innings, 13 strikeouts, which is really something we've never seen from him is the ability to, to strike people out. Are you are you buying the Chris Bubik jump here? Absolutely. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Absolutely. See, here's the thing with uh, Bubik. See, because I saw, I saw some people talking about like, oh, you know, uh, the projections for him aren't great. And it's like, yeah, but the projections didn't know he was going to p- completely change his arsenal. <laughs> like, that's... That's not included in the projections. So, yeah, the preseason projections aren't good for him. But if he's changed like he seems like he has, like, I mean, that is worth grabbing in every league. You know, if a guy comes in, he's throwing two miles per hour harder on his, uh, I think, on his four seam. And um, I think also, like, the uh, the slider now and... I, I think it's the slider and the change. Uh, the change is up like three miles per hour. So uh, the separation is larger with the four seamer and the slider is moving a lot better. So like, I don't know if he went to drive line. I don't know what his deal is, but he's throwing much better. And, you know, with like the Royals, I forget who the pitching coach is, but the Royals also had, they had success. This is why, like, I liked Brady Singer coming into the year. Like, they're able to uh, coach up their pitchers a lot. You know, not necessarily immediately. It seems like they, they take a little, they take a year or two before they really figure out how to get their pitchers to, like, pitch well, but uh, he's, like, Bubik is absolutely, like, He's a different pitcher right now. Now, whether or not he reverts back to like his previous pitching, then if that's the case, then well, that stinks and you drop him. But as of right now, he looks like a completely different guy. Like you mentioned his K's and his walks. Like, I mean, I don't expect it to continue, but right now he's got like a he's got a 1.58 uh FIP. And a walk rate under one and a K rate at 10.6. Like, yeah, I'm picking that up in every league. Absolutely. If this is a breakout, which it appears to be, you're going to be the one. You you want to be the one who has him on your team if he's breaking out. So it's worth it. And for like, you know, in response to like what you were saying about Fab, I had similar situation where I got. Uh, Bubik in one league for two dollars out of a hundred. Uh, I got him in another league for eight dollars out of a thousand, and in another league he went for eighty three dollars out of a thousand. So it's like all over the map as to how much people are really buying into him. But absolutely, I'm buying in until I see like until you see him not be better or not be as good as he's suddenly become, then, you know, why, you know, why turn your nose up at it and be like, no, I'm going to ignore it just because like his name sounds like pubic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's also the fact he put up a five, five, eight ERA last year and a one, seven whip, but yeah, I mean, there's, there, there's the, the name thing as well. Um, <laughs> in regards to the changes, he, he's added a slider. That's something he really didn't throw before. And he's adjusted the curve to where he's throwing it with more velocity. It's not breaking down as much, but it's just sharper. It seems like he's able to control it better. And I, I think the combination of that with the slider is, is just kind of helping the overall pitch mix. You mentioned he had a little bit of velocity as well. I don't know if it's a full two miles per hour. I think that depends on where you're looking, but he's added at least a mile per hour on what he did, you know, from, from the start of last year till now. So that's, that's nice to see. And and if you can get to like 93 plus like 93 is kind of that number where it starts to matter that you're throwing 
93. It's not just a pitch mix change. Like 93 plus is harder to hit. Where and then like 95, I believe, is the next number. And then I think you know, obviously, pretty much 95 on is ridiculously hard to hit. Yeah, I mean, we've seen we've seen guys you know pick up strikeouts out of nowhere before. Like you know, Charlie Morton comes to mind. It's like if a guy's throwing harder. It's like also, I think we're going to talk about Sean Manaya. It's like if a guy's throwing harder and he's getting results, just go with it until, you know, un- until further notice, really, you know? Yeah, I mean, still, yeah, I mean, still you can still play the matchups if you're worried about it and, and do what you would with any of your other bench pitchers. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely pick these guys up and see if there's, you know, the meaningful change that we're, we're kind of looking for that leads to the breakout seasons. I mean, that's where that's where you see it come into play. Moving on, uh, Anthony Desclafani, not, you know, a mysterious name. We've heard this name for forever, it feels like. It's another one that you could add to the, I didn't know he was still around list, but he <laughs> is still around. He's pitching for the Giants, and he's had a couple of good starts here, Gray. 12 and a third innings. He has 11 strikeouts. We've seen him put up, like, various, um, you know, places of good seasons are you are you picking up Desclafani like you're you're picking up Bubik or is this maybe like a step or two down from from Chris uh you know I'm picking him up I think I think the upside is a little bit more limited with uh Desclafani because like he just doesn't strike out a ton of guys but he also doesn't walk anyone so he's actually He's surprisingly, like, I actually, I wish I would have got him in my NL only leagues because he's like one of those guys who's like, he's sneaky safe. Like, he's probably, he's a surprising, like, solid number five that you can just throw out there. Like, you know, like, it's like you have guys like Lance Lynn and it's like, oh my God, he's giving me a headache. He's pitching so poorly. But then you have like Anthony Descafani. It's like, oh, that's exactly what I need. Just like a real nice, safe pitcher where I don't have to worry too much. And, you know, I'm able to like start him more or less every time out, except for, you know, maybe in cores, but you know, even possibly in cores potentially if it's a deep enough league. Um, but yeah, I, I like this Scafani. I just don't think there's much upside. Yeah. The strikeouts have never been all that great. Even when he had good seasons, it was like 24%, which is perfectly fine. If he's going to give you 166 innings of that, which was kind of his best case was 167 innings or so at, at that rate. Uh, so I kind of expect him to settle in there. I will say if just looking up at his pitch movement right now, he's got all the movement back plus some on his, you know, he kind of limited it down. He's limited down to the sinker change slider. He's not really throwing the force. He's not really throwing the curve anymore. So, but those three pitches, the sinker change slider are all breaking better horizontally and vertically right now. So I, I think for right now, yeah, while he's while healthy, he's healthy. He's fine. Yep, agreed. And since you already teed him up, let's go ahead and talk about Shamanaya. It's the guy that was noted in spring training as having, you know, a pitch velocity bump. I know I moved him up my rankings a little bit upon hearing that. That's one of those things from spring training that I will take notice of. And it, it seemed to stick. He's throwing two, two, he is two plus miles an hour over what he was last year. Now, he might not have been healthy last year. That's that's up for debate. But where are you at on Sean Manaya, who has eight innings, nine strikeouts, you know, four earned runs, but, again, yeah, it's only eight innings. Uh, yeah, no, I. but I'm really encouraged by his uh, his velocity being up. It's up, what, uh, almost over three miles per hour from last year on his fastball. So that's huge. And his slider's up four miles per hour. Yeah, I mean, he is definitely a guy who I was targeting there at the very end of uh, – draft season because you know word was out in spring training that he was throwing harder and if he's throwing like he was a sleeper for me going into last year and he totally bombed out but that was you know he said he came in uh he wasn't really like he didn't prep going into last year and he wasn't ready and he had a bad year and he's like you know recommitted to uh you know pitching better and he threw 
like in the off season, which you didn't do last year and everything. I mean, narrative wise, it all sounds like right. And it sounds like he's better and where he was supposed to be last year when I thought it was when I liked him and I thought he was going to be better than he was. So I'm in. I like Manaya. I, I the only thing that worries me a little bit is like, you know, the the Giants are I don't know what their rotation, what they're doing with their rotation. Like it really kind of concerned me when uh, Manaya came in after De Scalfani in that first uh, that first appearance that he made. Um, I, I'm assuming that was because of like a, uh, you know, Stripling was in the rotation and now Stripling's a, a long man out of the, the bullpen. So that changes, you know, uh, Manaya's in the rotation now, hopefully. So as long as Manaya's in the rotation, like I think he, I want to say he matches up against... I think he gets the Tigers this week. So I'm yeah, I'm definitely in on that start for sure. So yeah, I I like Manaya. I'm I would grab him in just about every league, you know? Like this goes back to like, you know, where we're like saying like there's so much pitching. It's like Descafani, Manaya, Bubik, uh, you know, like I'm not saying they're like necessarily aces right now, but if you're starting those three guys this week, I, you know, I, I, I would take that over like the Carlos Carrasco's and Lance Lynn's right now, you know? Yeah, that's, that's uh, completely fair. I guess if you have to rank those three for the pickup list, where are you going between Chris Bubik, uh, Anthony Scalfani, and Sean Manaya? I think uh, Bubik, Bubik, Manaya, De Scalfani, but, De Scafani is the safest. So it kind of depends on what you need. And it, it, it depends on how, like how deep the league is and like what you're looking for. Uh, but De Scafani is the safest, but also the least interesting. Bu- Bubik, I think is the, the least safe, but the most interesting. And Minaya is sort of in the middle of both of those. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I don't think anybody that any of them are necessarily like, 100% locked into a rotation spot. Maybe Desclafani, but as you said, like the Giants are doing weird things, and Ross Stripling just has just been awful right out of the gate. So if he gets it together, like I don't know where that goes between Manaya and Desclafani. I assume if they just continue to pitch well, they'll just leave him in the rotation and maybe just leave for Stripling where he is. I'm super- but that's always kind of hanging back there. Right. Yeah. No. Agreed. And I, I'm super interested in what Bubik looks like against uh, the Braves this uh, this week. Uh, yeah. At, at at home too. So I mean, the Braves are not the easiest of matchups, but in Kauffman Stadium and with Harris out, and like we were talking about the Braves outfield earlier. Like I, I'm starting Bubik in a in a few leagues this week. Yeah. I will say we you know, you know we didn't mention that Ronald Acuna Jr. guy in the outfield for the Braves, so you know he kind of he kind of he kind of buoys it a little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, Wander Franco. Uh, I mean, is is the breakout is the breakout here? He has four home runs, two stolen bases. He's sitting three fifty one. Gray uh, is is this one of the breakouts that's that's ready to happen this season? I think you were you were kind of on the wait and see a little bit. Yeah. And I yeah. think I was too, for the most part. I mean, I'll, I'll join you in that. Right. You know, I kind of wish I would have went back in on him this year because, I mean, the price was really good in drafts. It was it was kind of obvious uh, that he was, you know, because I loved him last year. And he's basically doing the same thing he did last year for, like, you know, in, like, the first month of the season. Like, he had, like, a great month, and then he was, you know, he got injured, and he was out for, like, you know, forever. Um, so, I mean, I like I like Wander Franco a lot. Like, I think he has, like, all the potential in the world. Like, he could be, uh, let's say, 20, 25 homer, 15 steals, 300 average like and that's that's borderline top 15 top 20 guy i mean that's that's a those are really good stats for you know assuming the runs and rbis that come with that so yeah i mean that's randy a rosarina with you know 40 points on average 
Uh, so yeah, no, that's, I mean, those are good numbers. I wish I had Wander Franco instead of O'Neill Cruz. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you're, you're all in on Wander then. Is he yeah, moving yeah, pretty I much? Wander. Yeah. I think Wander, five, I, I think Wander, six. yeah, no, I think Wander is absolutely as talented as they come. Like, I think he could be like last year, I probably ranked him a little bit too high when I put him in the top 20. But I think Wander Franco is a top 20 hitter overall. It's just a matter of whether or not like he breaks out this year and we see it this year and he stays healthy, which, you know, I mean, last year I think was a fluky injury. So I, I'm not, you know, I'm not labeling him injury prone or anything. I, I think he should stay healthy. I, I would trade for Wander Franco. I think he's, I think he's crazy talented. All right. Would you give, uh, I guess, a couple of guys that went similar ADPs, uh, Xander Bogarts, Tim Anderson, above both of those guys? Mm, yeah. I mean, I would actually, I would want Wander Franco over Xander Bogarts, but they are, they're probably very similar at the end of the day. I think they're, they're probably like, if I had to say Bogarts potential uh, for projections i would say his his upside is probably the same as what i just said for wander which is like 25 15 300 yeah yeah that's fair so i think it just kind of depends on whether you want to take a little bit of the upside gamble on on wander or just kind of the you know xander does what he does every every year somehow some way it just happens yeah, except last year but yeah yeah well you know everybody gets one you get one <laughs> Uh, you already mentioned Luis Robert uh, or Louis Robert as uh, you know the, you think the injury is coming. I mean, he's always he always looks good when he's healthy, though, right? Like I was going to bring him up and talk about him, but really, yeah. like it, it's it's not whether he's he's good. It's just does he stay on the field? Yeah, I mean, he's also he seems like he has a lot of fluky injuries too. He kind of reminds me of the uh, Acuna O'Neill Cruz now. Tatis, like they're so exciting, but they play such balls to the wall. Oh, Jazz Chisholm's another one. Like they play such balls to the wall type baseball that it seems like they always find a way to injure themselves, which is you know super unfortunate. Like you don't you don't want that. So I mean, hopefully Louis Robert stays on the field. Like you know, I got nothing against him. I just I just think you know until he's able to stay on the field for more than. A hundred games, I you can't assume it. Yeah, maybe this gives maybe the Eloy injury gets him some time at DH. Maybe that allows him to stay stay in the lineup a little bit more as well. Um, so I, I guess I'm saying I'm a little bit higher on him, just given the fact that Eloy's already on the D on the IL so early. But nothing's really changed with Louis Robert. I mean, he's 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 a phenomenal baseball player when when healthy and on the field. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't. 2020 obviously was a weird year, but at no point in his career has he's been on the field for a hundred games or more. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, he's going to be, he's 25 years old and he still hasn't played for more than, a, and he's been in the league for, you know, this is his fourth season. Um, okay. One of those years was goofy. So anyway, so he's had two years now where he hasn't been able to stay on the field for more than a hundred games, which, you know, it's not great. Yeah, that's completely fair. I mean, one of them was under 70 games. So, I mean, it, we're, even 100 is kind of, uh, you know, it, it it's not great. Yeah. Uh, moving on, James Altman. This is a guy, you know, I don't know that we really predicted him to start the season like this. He's sitting 296. He has the home runs, a stolen base. Uh, he is hit, sitting at a 31% K rate, but he does have a 20% walk rate, which is nice to see. Don't really expect 20% walk rate to stick around, but he has he is a guy who does take his share of walks. Are you in on James Outman? Um, not really, <laughs> to be honest. I you know, he's he's a weird one because I feel like I'm usually uh I'm usually super jazzed about like a lot of these like young guys. But it seems to me like most of the people in the comments are much more excited about Outman than I am. I don't know why. I mean, I I see the upside. I mean, he does have power and speed, which is always, you know, obviously it's a good thing. He strikes out a ton. Like he really like right now he's got a 31 percent uh, strikeout rate and he's uh, 
got a 385 Babbitt, which is keeping his average afloat right this second. But, you know, the average could change so quickly in the early going here that by the time people listen to this, he might be hitting like 220. Uh, He's got, you know, I don't know. I mean, he's definitely getting platooned, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing, as we've talked about before, because he's a lefty. So you don't really want him facing lefties? I don't know, man. Like, I see him, and I'm like, maybe at best-case scenario, like 22 homers, 10 steals, and a 230 average, which is okay, I guess, for, like, a NL-only league. Uh, for mixed league, I mean, it's... It's okay if for like a fifteen team mixed league. If it's, if he's like your fifth outfielder, I guess that's okay. I'm just I'm not really a huge like I'm not a, I'm I don't have him anywhere. Maybe that's you know uh, coloring my judgment a little bit. But yeah, I'm not really super into him. Yeah, I'm not completely on him either. I think you ride the wave. I mean, he's he's obviously very hot to start the season. That being said, I don't necessarily think he's you know, going to stick at this level. Again, I think it becomes kind of an OBP version of uh, like, like kind of like Cody Bellinger, like where it's just OBP and just like he gets stolen bases and home runs because he's really talented and has power speed, but you don't necessarily like it's going to come with a ton of strikeouts and a whole lot of up and down. So yeah. that's, that's kind of where I'm looking at, at James Altman is if you want He's gonna that, be, that kind of production. Super streaky, yeah. Yeah. Although Bellinger hasn't been striking out this year. He just also isn't hitting the ball. He just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, Cubs. Oh, Cubs. <laughs> Well, you know that's that that's just uh, that's just how we how it goes here. Um, you have uh, I I put yeah so I so I wrote in on the uh, podcast outline Stone Garrett, uh, who has been another guy who I think besides Bubik, I think Stone Garrett was the the hot pickup. Uh, in fab this week for for my leagues at least i saw stone garrett like i you know not to toot my own horn hey if i could toot my own horn i'd never leave my house okay but not to toot my own horn i took stone i picked up stone garrett for nothing uh last week in leagues so i i'm already in on the stone garrett thing so maybe that's again like we were i was saying with outman i don't have many leagues so maybe that's calling my judgment with Outman and why I'm more interested in Stone Garrett because I already have him and I got him for super cheap, but he looks better to me. Like I don't know what I don't know what the playing time's gonna be like. Uh like I think um like right now they're still going with um uh Lane <laughs> Lane Thomas. He's a he's a national by the way for people who, who don't know who Stone Garrett is. Uh I, they're still going with Lane Thomas who honestly I mean he feels like uh, he's got to. They got to move on from him. <laughs> he's terrible. Victor Robles is actually not doing terrible to start the year, but I mean, we know Stone. We know who Victor Robles is. And then uh, Joey Menez, who I mean, I you know, I told everyone to avoid him. And then they have Dominic Smith at first base. So if Menez goes to first base, maybe they open up DH. Uh, what I'm getting at is Stone Garrett doesn't necessarily have everyday playing time. But in the minor leagues in AAA, he went. He hit 28 homers, stole 15 bags, and hit 275. Granted, he was 26 years old at the time, so you know there's a potential here for a quad A type player. You know, I've seen him compared to uh, Adalas Garcia potentially. Stone Garrett has, as like like with Outman. I don't think he's really that different than Outman, except he doesn't have everyday playing time. Like Stone Garrett, to me, is basically if he has if he has everyday playing time, he's like twenty two to twenty five homers, ten ish, ten ish to twelve ish steals, and you know two thirty average, which is you know more or less what James Outman was. So 
Yeah, I don't think Stone Garrett is going to be everyone's answer to their problems on like waivers. It depends on the league. If the league's deep enough, I like Stone Garrett. I think, you know, in an NL only league, I love Stone Garrett. In a mixed league, it kind of depends on your needs. Yeah, I, I could see adding Stone Garrett, but like you said, it it's going to be a platoon situation. So I, I think you gave, you know, only leagues, absolutely. Deep mixed leagues, take a look. But I, until he gets the playing time, I, I think it's kind of a monitor situation. But you're right. I mean, he's not far removed from James Outman, which people were definitely falling all over themselves to potentially pick him up. And so definitely somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, Matt Strom looks like he might be, I, I don't know, is he going into the rotation officially, Gray? No. <laughs> uh, he had one He had one start. He had, he, had, yeah. he had one start at New York for, for Philly. Are you interested in Matt Strom here? As he's gotten off to at least a clean start to I mean to he the should year. I mean, he could be he could be in the rotation. It depends on like like I don't know what's going on with the, the Phillies. Uh you know, the Phillies have a bunch of injuries. So I think Strom's in the in the rotation, maybe as the fifth man for I don't know, for the foreseeable future, maybe, maybe for at least the next week. <laughs> um he doesn't have like he's never really uh, Strom has never really uh, had a ton of innings. Uh, excuse, yeah, not a ton of innings, not a ton of games started. So he can't, he's not really going to stay in the rotation or be like, you know, a guy for the whole season. But for right now, if he's in the rotation, he has good, uh, he's more or less a streamer uh, for matchups, but he does have good command. So if, you know, good command usually lends itself to, like not having blow ups, not having blow ups is good for a streamer because it won't absolutely it won't kill you. Um, you know, obviously there's you know <laughs> things happen, but you know hopefully he won't kill you. So <laughs> yeah, I, I like him as a streamer if he's got good matchups. It's probably a wait wait and see situation, and like I would say. 15 team mixed leagues and deeper is where I would be looking at him in shallower mixed leagues. You're, you're probably okay to avoid for right now. Yeah, I think that's the right area. 15 team mixed leagues is the only place that I've, I would potentially be looking at him. And I do think he has a spot for now. I, I Ranger Suarez is still coming back. I believe he's potentially going to start, um, you know, his, his, or get a couple of, spring training starts here or not spring training my league starts and so it's probably two or three weeks that you're looking at at strom if everything goes right for ranger suarez but that's assuming everything goes right so again somebody to monitor short term i, I don't know if he gets a, a, a or maintains his spot whenever suarez is ready uh bryce terang is off to a good start he's hitting 304 he has a home run stolen base and Milwaukee seems to be playing him pretty regularly, which, you know, we weren't really sure where he was going to fit in as, as far as, you know, the regularity of his at-bats. But he seems like he's he's pretty much an everyday, everyday player, player right now, Greg. Right. Hopefully he moves up the lineup soon. Uh, yeah, definitely. And also, I mean, I was kind of surprised in the preseason that there was so little made of him. Like, he does have – I mean, he has, I, I want to say, 35-plus steel speed. Uh, and possibly seven to 10 homer power. So, you know, if he were to get into that upside, 10 homers, 35 steals, and if he has a 15% strikeout rate, he's going to be really good. I mean, that, that's those numbers to me, like, I, I don't think anyone really makes more sense than him at the top of the uh, Brewers lineup, I guess like they, you know, they've been going with Yelich for so long. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think Yelich is going to get replaced. So I guess Terang is sort of stuck at the bottom of the lineup because he's not a middle of the lineup guy. So he's either going to be at the top of the lineup or the bottom of the lineup. So he's probably stuck at the bottom for now, but I, I think he's really, I mean, I think he's probably, the shallowest of leagues, like, you know, even a, 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 maybe not a 10 team mixed league because in the 10 team mixed league, everyone's available, but in a 12 team mixed league, for sure, to ranks, uh, definitely worth rostering. All right. So I, 
sounds like you're you're pretty much in on Terang. And I mean, at second base, anybody that brings some upside is is pretty much a must grab at this point because second base is just it's just been awful. Um, and we keep losing more and more. Thank goodness for now, Jazz Chisholm hasn't gone. Uh, Brian Anderson, also in Milwaukee. He's also off to a great start. I mean, he's a guy who could who could potentially move up. He, he does have kind of the bad. I mean, he's not all that different from anybody else in, 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 the, in the, the Milwaukee, Milwaukee lineup, lineup, right? right? Mm, no, no, he's I mean, but he's more of a middle of the order uh, bat. So, you know, he's probably at, at worst, uh, maybe clean up. Uh, but he's, I, I think he's more, he's basically a hotch potato in my mind. Like, I don't think Brian Anderson is really anything, <laughs> to be quite honest. I think, like, if he were, like, if this is this, he's the type of guy, and his first, like, you know, nine games of the season, like, if he had these random nine games in July or August, you'd be like, yeah, I mean, he's hot, pick him up. Don't expect much. I don't think I don't think anything else is really with Brian Anderson. I think he's probably like going to be droppable in you know another two weeks. So we'll see though. I mean, maybe he's breaking out. I I think he just happens to be hot th- these first two weeks of the season though. Yeah, that's that's very likely. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's got a four sixty seven BABIP at the moment. So that that kind of screams just hotch potato as you mentioned nothing's really changed in in his underlying numbers that i can see so i I would agree grab him while he's hot but i wouldn't expect this uh again it's maybe he gets double dual eligibility in your league he has third base outfield so you know if that's useful and and you're limited on bench spots or in, in a deep enough league where position flexibility is useful then then yeah take a look at brian anderson otherwise just ride it while it's good. Let's move over to some bullpens here. Jose Alvarado appears to be the only one left, the in, the one left in the Philly pen who can pen. get anybody out. <laughs> and the, uh, I had this question on the uh, on the site today. Uh, I, I actually I posed this question. Uh, has anyone been good in the Phillies bullpen since Brad Ledge? <laughs> Don't I can't remember for the life of me anyone being decent. Like they have. The worst bullpen. Even they went to the World Series last year with a terrible bullpen. Like, I mean, Sir Anthony Dominguez has moments for sure. Um, Kimbrell has moments, absolutely. I, I kind of liked Gregory Soto, you know, before he had visa problems in the preseason. I, I thought Gregory Soto could potentially be an option for them. I still think he probably can be. Like, at some point... Uh, yeah, Alvarado looks good right now. Do I trust Jose Alvarado? Oh, hell no, bro. <laughs> hell no, bro. No way. Uh-uh, no way. Yeah, I mean, again, he's the only one who's done anything. He got he got the look. I mean, I feel like he's he's got to be next in line just the way that everybody guys, else has been pitching. He's thrown like he's has he has four innings so far this year. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I understand that, but you know, yeah, the way that Kimbrell and Sir Anthony have gotten lit up in their like three innings, <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. No, I mean, Sir Anthony no. has four innings. He, he's he's got a fifteen point seven five ERA. Uh, Kimbrell's got got three and a third innings. He's got a thirteen point five ERA. It, it's not. I mean, nobody in the Philly pen is is killing it. Soto's got four innings. He's got a nine ERA. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just looking around at who's actually gotten anybody out, and the only answer in Philly right now is Jose Alvarado. So, uh, uh, what, what about uh, Kevin Pillar? Can he uh, pitch? <laughs> <laughs> only if they're up by ten or more runs, Gray, <laughs> or Dessa. Yeah, mm-hmm. or down seven or something. Yeah, that's the rule, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the cool. rule, yeah. <laughs> All right. Aroldis Chapman has started the well year very clean. He picks up a save on Scott Barlow's day off. It's Scott Barlow's job unless he blows up, right? You're not, you're not necessarily yeah, looking I, at, like, a part-time I, job I, here. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think Aroldis Chapman's, a, for now at least, he looks like a decent handcuff. But, yeah, no, it's Barlow's job. 
All right. Uh, Carl Edwards, Kyle Finnegan has been kind of a issue. Can we say Finnegan, man? Oh, man. Avoid. (laughs) Avoid the Nationals' entire bullpen, man. It's just like that's a mess, and they're gonna and they're gonna what win fifty eight games? Like, oh yeah, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I'm all for Sagnoff, but yeah, like, come on, <laughs> have some self respect. That that's a mess. It's, it's uh, yeah. not good. Uh, I, I think if I have to go, it's Carl Edwards though. Like, I, I don't want Kyle Finnegan. I just don't want him on my team. Finnegan is. I think Finnegan is cooked. <laughs> I don't think Carl Edwards is good though either. I like. I, I don't think he is. But Hunter Harvey is actually interesting. He's the, probably the the most interesting there. But I don't think they're gonna give him saves that are gonna like you know boost his arbitration or whatever. I don't know. I. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think it's worth speculating, really. But I guess Carl Edwards Jr. I mean, I feel like they can they can do whatever they want with arbitration. It's like they're spending any money on the current roster. Yeah, they might as well just spend it in arbitration. Uh, Paul Sewell looks like he's back at closer after Munoz got the first attempt at it. That was just that was just overreaction on us, apparently. Munoz is hurt. He's out. He's he's IL'd. Uh, so yeah, Seawald's the uh, the closer for right now. Um, I don't know what happens when Munez comes back, but he's got a uh, deltoid, I believe. Yeah, didn't. But before he went out, they had already given Seawald a, another shot, yeah. right? Or yeah. gotten saves. Maybe I don't know if it was because he was injured. I think yeah. it's probably. If I had to, get, if Munez is uh, healthy. I would say I would guess it's sixty forty uh, for Seawald, but I think they're they're both going to get saves. Like they've already said, like Service has already said that he's not. They're not choosing a closer, so it's going to be Seawald more than likely. But he's never going to get. He's never going to be getting a hundred percent of the saves. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Uh, I guess it, for now, though, it, it's Seawald. Um, until Munoz is back, Jose Leclerc, Will Smith. We it was kind of like Leclerc's the guy. It seems like I mean not, Leclerc hasn't done anything wrong, but Will Smith seems like uh, he he may get some looks here too in the uh, Rangers bullpen. Yeah, yeah, no, because I I did. I mean, as someone I think uh, I don't know if it was on the site or I read somewhere that like because uh, Bochi used to use Will Smith in San Francisco. So he's familiar with them. So he went back to Will Smith for uh, for saves in Texas, which, you know, that kind of made sense to me. I think uh, Leclerc's still going to get a bunch of saves, though. So I think it's probably, again, I think I think this one's probably 70-30 in favor of Leclerc. But I think Will Smith will probably, some lefty heavy uh, lineups in the ninth inning, probably going to see Will Smith. Yeah, I'd say that's that's pretty much how I'm viewing it. It's going to be righty versus lefty, and then just you know that's how they'll they'll handle that. The Dodgers won't say he's the closer, but Evan Phillips is the closer, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, Loizaga gets injured. Clay Holmes is, is back to doing his his job, but just wanted to bring it up. Is it is it Ron Mar? I, I'm not even Marnasio. Marinasio. Hey, it's a Ronnie Marinasio, huh? Is that who we're looking at as potentially backing up if you're if you're backing up saves in, in New York or um Albert Abreu, maybe? Michael, Michael King? Maybe Michael King. Yeah. It could be Michael King. He hasn't exactly been great if I uh if I'm recalling his how he started the season. Um but yeah, Michael King could be the guy as well. Mm, yeah. All right, moving on. Um, pickups, Gray, or I guess let's talk about Adam Duvall's wrist real quick. That kind of sucks. Adam Duvall looked like he was, you know, mm-hmm. back on track for what he was. What Adam Duvall does, I mean, Boston, we said it might be a good spot for him, and it had been so up to this point. Where are you at on Adam Duvall's wrist, and are you interested in Tapia, your your boy, at Romel well, Tapia know. again? Yeah, I mean, as we're uh... – as we're recording this, I have no idea how long Duvall is going to be out, but from the looks of it, it looked like it was going to knock him out for a while, like months, 
versus days, but yeah, I don't know as of right now. Uh, I think I think Toppy is kind of interesting in like deeper leagues because he could potentially get some steals, but they're likely going to. I would think they're going to go to some sort of platoon of like Tapia, Ref Snyder, maybe maybe they call up Duran. I don't know. Um, no, no one that's really jumping off the page that's that interesting right now. Uh, except for maybe Tapia, if he were to be every day, but I don't think he's going to be an everyday starter. Yeah, I mean, I think if they bring up Duran, it's Duran or Tapia. If they get a full time gig, it could be interesting just because they have the speed to potentially put up stolen bases, stolen bases that are meaningful. But I think that's really all you're looking at from from the replacement. If Adam Duvall, again, we don't really know timeline right now as we're recording it. If he's out for a long period of time, are you fine cutting him? Or are you willing to hang on on, on your aisle spots? Um, TBD. I mean, I don't know. It, de- <laughs> it depends. If he's out for longer than six weeks, he's probably a cut in most leagues. I mean, he's Adam Duvall. Yeah, I agree. Even though this hot start, I wouldn't get overly attached to him. And it's the same risk that he had surgery on back in or last year. So... You know, it, it's, I would kind of almost expect he reverts back to Adam Duvall of last year because it's just, you know, the, the wrist is, is it, it injured again. It's bad, yeah. Uh, let's let's talk about some pickups real quick, Gray, and then we'll get out of here. Anybody that we haven't discussed yet that, that might be on the list or have we – I mean, we've covered a lot of people. We are an hour and a half in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Chaz McCormick, who I've liked – for a long time, he's a good contact guy, and he's hitting at the top of the Astros lineup, which is always good. So that's kind of interesting. And, I mean, Michael Grove sucks so bad that the Dodgers have to call up Gavin Stone. I mean, they gotta. Come on. Like, it's like, Michael Grove is awful. Call up Gavin Stone now, please. Um, and we we talked about a lot of other pickups, so I'll leave it there. <laughs> Yeah, I, we talked about pretty much everybody else that I think would, would make this list. Uh, I guess if you're looking for stolen bases, Miles Straw might be doing Miles Straw things again this year with all the with all the restrictions on the pickoffs and the b- bigger bases. So um, that, that's somebody potentially to look at, but that's, that's really all I got beyond all the people that we've already discussed. If you have anything specific for us, you can always find us in the comments, either on Razzball or... Or on youtube.com slash Razzball Fantasy. Subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Great. Until next week. See you, man. All right, ladies.